Hi, this is another BiteWiser.com Inkscape tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a cloud using spiral curves with the pencil tool. So we'll get started by using the pencil tool. So let's go click on that, or you can press F6. And what we want to, well, let me show you how it works first. First, uh, the way that this is set up by default, at least on my computer, is that it always wants me to create a Bezier path. That's the mode that it's in. Smoothing is set down to one and shape is none. And so that's what you get, just a line. It's really boring looking and it looks terrible because there's no smoothing added to it. So, you know, if you, you can crank up smoothing a little bit, do something like that again, you know, it looks slightly better. It gets rid of some of the little jagged edges and bumps that you make, um, but it, it really doesn't do much. What we want to do in order to make this cloud is we want to use a spiral curve and we want to use an ellipse. And let me show you what an ellipse does. We can do something like this and get that kind of nice curve there. It's really nice. And if you did triangle in, what that would do would be that the point would end where, well, where you start is the base of the triangle and where you end is the tip of the triangle. And triangle out is, you know, you guessed it, the opposite. So it starts with the point of the triangle and ends with the base of the triangle. And one more thing that we can do, just as an example here, is we can make some sort of weird shape. It really doesn't matter what. Let's do something like this. And so we got a shape there. Press Control C to copy it to your clipboard, and we can delete that. And now go back to our pencil tool, go to Shape, and from Clipboard. And what you'll see will be nuts. It, it won't be that good. <laughs> but that's that's the shape that we copied from the clipboard. Maybe if we went bigger, you know, do something like that. And now you can see that's the shape that I had made, you know, following the contours of this spiral curve. So we can get out of here now, and now we can actually move on to making our cloud. So let's go to shape, and I like to use the ellipse, the ellipse shape. So we're just going to draw a swirl similar to the one that I drew just a little bit ago. And yeah, yeah, that's not exactly what I wanted. Let me zoom in just a little bit because we're way out here. Okay. Now let's try this again. This will probably look better now. So let's go ahead and there. Got something not too bad here. Not too bad. And so what you can do is start to manipulate the curve just how you want it. And it's really easy to manipulate. It just takes a short amount of time to learn how it works and then you're off and running. So this looks really good. Um, and the basis for this tutorial, the reason why I'm doing it is because I, I did, I made a cloud using these spiral curves for uh, somebody, for somebody's logo that uh, recently asked me for a logo. And I just figured that, you know, uh, somebody might make use of this as far as, you know, how to use these spiral curves. So I figured I'd make this tutorial. So uh, let's go ahead and make the rest of the cloud. So I'm just going to make a couple of arcs. Actually I'll make one arc probably. And I'm just going to rotate this guy. Now what I did there to change from this to this was just click on it. Left click on it. And then grab that and rotate. And I want something kind of like that. I'll move that out of the way. And let me go <clears throat> I'm going to duplicate this, so Control D. Let's move that guy, and I'm going to want to spin, spin him around kind of like that. Click on this again, Control Shift, and I want to make this a little bit smaller. And we'll just do something like that. And now I need to make the rest of the clouds. So what I did, whoop, let's grab our pencil tool, not the Bezier tool, and do something like that. And let's go in and clean that up a little bit. So it just it takes just a little bit of practice to 
to see how this works and get a good feel for it and make make things start to look good. We're almost there, I think. That looks just about good, but we got to move this down just a touch because there is a little bit of that overlap there. So let's let's do that. And so now we got our cloud, and not too bad. So, but we can do better. Uh, let's go and do path object to path. And so that'll convert all these from pencils, uh, whatever that is from spiral curves to objects to paths and let's perform a union on that so this is just one big item right now and what we can do now is we can go ahead grab our rectangle tool make a big rectangle do an object to path on it and press end to move it behind the cloud now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and press shift and select the cloud Oh. Before I do that, I better make a duplicate of the cloud, so Control D, and now I'll press Shift and click on the rectangle. Let's perform a difference, and there, it looks great, right? Well, what happened was this. Let me scoot this over just a little bit. And so there we have an outline of our shape that we made, which is pretty cool. Now, what we can also do is we can break. Oh, no. Let's select that. You can break this apart. And what you got to do is let's delete this and grab that guy, delete this guy. So we also got this going on here, which really looks pretty good. So, you know, another thing that we can do here too is just to kind of mix it up a little bit. I'm going to press Control D on this guy and change him to a different shade. and press Control D again and change them to a different color because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go grab my Bezier tool and I'm going to what I'm going to do is make little shiny marks on the tops of this uh, cloud here so there we go and let's kind of bend that in a little bit and one more thing we can do with this cloud is let's go do a dynamic offset and let's pull that down a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. That's good. And I'll do an ob uh, yeah, object to path on that. And come to think of it, I only needed one duplicate of the bigger cloud because now I'm going to duplicate this green guy that I made. You'll see why in a minute. So there we go. Now I'm going to do click on that guy click on this green cloud, one of the two green clouds that I have, and I'm going to do an intersection on it. And we'll get back to that in a second. Now let me go ahead and make another another, oh, another call. Uh, uh, what do I want to say? Reflection like that. And let me move this guy down just a touch. And I'm going to want to bend him a little bit too, right here. And so I'm going to have that guy selected. Shift, select the green, and then do an intersection on that. Okay, and we can get rid of that guy. So now what I want to do is let's go and change the color. Let's scoot this over a little bit. And we can change the color. Let's do a linear gradient, edit that and want to make this guy white and now we want to change this guy from being green to white and we want the alpha value to be yeah, somewhere down here you can leave it at zero that's fine and so what we can do now is grab this edit pass by nodes tool move this up here move that down here I'm holding control so that it moves in increments and let's do that and let me grab this guy as you can see there's a little chunk down here that we don't want so I'm gonna break that apart and just like that guy delete them we don't need them and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and over here do a linear gradient and I'm gonna go in this drop down box and grab the color that I made over here for this guy 
grab the edit pass my notes tool bring that up here press control and move that down here something like that and one last thing I want to do is I want to hit shift and hit this X to get rid of that stroke and so there we got a shiny little uh, cloud and here's this little guy too so that's how you can make a nice looking cloud using Spiro Curves and Inkscape. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to see any more, we have lots of other tutorials at BiteWiser.com. See you later. Thanks for watching.